welcome home. You are a part of the living, magnificent spaceship called Earth. This spaceship is in a touch and go moment right now, edging both on societal, economic, and ecological collapse, but also on a regenerative revolution. Humanity is awakening to its potential as an apex healer rather than a perpetual predator. As we remember to tune in to the cycles of life, we realize the deep and very savvy technology of nature. It has 3.8 billion years of research and development. The earth is one large super organism. The soil is its digestive system, processing and recycling nutrients. The atmosphere is its respiratory system, breathing air and retaining the perfect amount of heat in. The water cycle is the blood flow of the earth, lubricating and bringing access to nutrients. These are the automatic processes of our earth that create true wealth. But we've built our entire modern economy, perfecting systems that actively destroy these processes. Conventional agriculture does not build topsoil. We're burning away the digestive system of our earth. We use the atmosphere as a trash dump. We're suffocating our respiratory system. We've turned our watersheds into pipe sheds. We've cut down 3 trillion trees that keep that water flowing. We're dangerously low on our H2O flow, our lifeblood. It has not always been this way. Many traditions have lived in sync with life's rhythms. When we live and stay in tune with nature, to experience the soil, air, and water cycles, we can see that living in reciprocity brings abundance. Humans planted the Amazon by paying attention to these cycles. Indigenous communities tended plants, building soil and creating habitat for animals. They thrived for millennia by living in right relationship with the earth. To live as a regenerative species, we need to tune in to life and increase the ability of the natural systems around us to perform their basic functions tune into life and increase the ability of the natural systems around you to perform their basic functions. If we enable every natural system we touch to grow and prosper more, we are in service of life and in turn, life is in service of us. We find ourselves now at a crossroads knowing that the culture of dominance, exploitation, competition, and control have led us to the edge of collapse. But we remember another way. We now have more tools than ever to enable that way of consent, regeneration, cooperation, and reciprocity. We confuse Darwin's observance of nature, natural systems, and evolution, and wrongly interpreted him as saying it's their survival of the fittest. When in fact, learning from life showed him that it is the survival of the fitness within your ecosystem. How much you give back determines survival. The solutions are here and we are far more capable than we have ever been before to tend to our wild and living earth. 
and to bring ourselves back to life. Cooperating Manual is here to give us a clear set of community sourced systems interventions for how to navigate this critical path. It is honest, inclusive, and optimistic. Navigating each chapter will lead you to honest, clear, scientific information on the solutions and stories of a future that works for 100% of life. The manual is inclusive, bringing in diverse voices and perspectives, as well as making the content accessible to all. And the cooperatively created content is optimistic. Though the moment is critical, we have more than all we need to transcend and transform into a new global cooperative society. Welcome home. for over a year now. Uh, it's just such a joy to be able to, to share a, a live link to a manual. It is very much under construction still, uh, but if you go to spaceshipearth.live, you can uh, begin to see, you can also see a transcript of um, the poem that I just read. And we worked with a huge team. There's a huge team that worked on Regenerosity all weekend. Uh, Hack for Earth has just been an incredible of catalytic uh, tool for us to expand our programs. And I'd love to invite uh, the cooperating manual team that's here up to the stage uh, and to introduce our first program of the cooperating manual. We're inviting everyone to become astronauts on Spaceship Earth by joining us for Space Camp. So. Uh, Amanda recognizes that she cannot create this co cooperation manual alone. Um, it is, again, a cooperation manual. Um, there are tons of more sections aside from the blue carbon one you see next to us, right, right there, um, that we still need populated. And in order to make that happen, we have created a base camp to turn all of us into design scientists, which is a concept originated from Buck Buckminster Fuller. Um, and it is an approach to solving problems that requires recognizing a space as a scientist as something that has nuance and things to be tested and also as a designer and engineer where we have to think critically and innovatively to create solutions in these spaces. Um, so we have this kind of Instagrammable <laughs> uh, square here um, that kind of speaks to you as someone who is frustrated and uh, ambivalent to this complex apocalypse that we are facing. Um, and we're just throwing out a hand to say, you're not alone. <laughs> and we are excited to work with you. Um, come join our fellow terrestrial astronauts, aspiring comprehensivists, systems integrators, experimental philosophers, radical empiricists, synesthetic synthesizers, planetary physicians, and cartographers of complexity to expand our collective imagination. Enroll in the Buckminster Fuller Institute's Design Science course, Space Camp for Becoming a Crew Member of Spaceship Earth. We'll explore systems thinking, rapid prototyping, traditional, economic, yeah, bleh, traditional ecological knowledge, biomimicry, and other frameworks to offer you new cognitive, a new cognitive scaffolding upon which to design the future. It's a six-week course. It'll be starting November 18th. Um, and if you want to participate, become a member of BFI today. <laughs> so we're really excited about uh, launching that course. And again, it's kind of this orientation layer for people that we want to join us as co-authors of this cooperating manual. Uh, another thing that we worked on this weekend is developing the first chapter uh, which we've been working on at BFI for a while of the cooperating manual, which is on blue carbon. Uh, and we have some new uh, ways that we're going to present this information to make it not feel quite as academic and white paper-y as uh, you may have expected from doing this sort of research. And 
if you go to the blue carbon site, you can kind of begin to see a draft of what this chapter looks like. And then Laura Watts here is going to explain a little bit about the development that we did over the last two days uh, to make it even more accessible. So, yeah, I came into this group with an excitement and invigorating passion for this project, but not knowing much about blue carbon. And I got to acquaint myself with it through reading some amazing research papers that have been um, facilitated by BFI. Um, and the question we were posed with is how can we present this information in a way that all different people of all different backgrounds can understand and walk away with a concept of opportunities and key leverage points, um, also described as Bucky, but as trim tabs, um, to make huge shifts with a minimal amount of energy. Um, and so Blue Carbon itself, as the first chapter, presents amazing opportunities because 70% of Earth's oxygen is produced by marine life. And marine ecosystems are the lungs of planet Earth. And we're faced with this problem, as we all are aware, that our globe has a carbon overload. And oceans are particular, of particular importance because our coastal habitats are being lost at 400% faster than rainforests. And so, as we did earlier, we can just let that information sink in, but take a good deep breath along with our Earth, which is this breathing organism. <sighs> and see the opportunity that we have here. Blue carbon can save planet Earth. The carbon cycles within marine ecosystems, aka blue carbon, are the most potent form of carbon sequestrations that humans know of today. So we're asking you, everyone, to join the regenerative, regenerative revolution using the technology of nature. And this is, this is you on blue carbon. <laughs> the, the story here is really, you know, uh, oceans have been kind of the damsel in distress uh, often of the, the story of climate change. And we really think that they can be the superhero of the story. Uh, there's so much carbon in the oceans and we need to bring it back to life in so many different ways. And that's what blue carbon does. It enables the carbon that's in the atmosphere. We have an excess trillion tons of CO2. We can bring it back to life through our ocean ecosystems. And so we present in this guide the opportunity to activate a mass mobilization through demonstrating viability and scalability of blue carbon projects that we've that are there's a huge network of that we'll run through a little bit later. <laughs> And so we welcome you to the next wave of change and let's go forward together with this. Um, a few keywords of importance here, and this is, we're using this also as a template for future chapters. So the idea of learning these keywords that are fundamental to whatever the subject matter is, um, gives us all the opportunity to see potential. So one example of that here is tech, a new version of tech, which is traditional ecological knowledge. Um, we're learning about the importance of kelp, um, of the situation of erosion at our coasts, um, the opportunities for community-led conservation. And this is all a keyword of mangroves and also an opportunity and a leverage point. So because these tropical forests, which are found at the edge of the land and the sea, have an outsized opportunity because they hold as up to 10% of total emissions from deforestation globally, even though they only account for 0.7% of tropical forest areas. So here are some more trim tabs or systematic, systemic intervention leverage points. So protecting coastal habitats, um, floating farms and growing new biomass, regulating um, manufacturing and pollution, you know, demanding that our governments restrict fertilizers, fish farming, um, and regulate coastal land development, et cetera. 
Uh, whale poop is another big opportunity for us. Um, whales carry nutrients such as nitrogen from the ocean depth back to the surface. Um, and by increasing population and activity of whales in regions that are deficient in nutrients such as iron, we can stimulate phytoplankton growth, which can be exported to the deep sea as sequestered carbon. Um, so disrupting the industrial fishing industry um, by feeding people and not profits. 97% of industrial ocean fishing is by high income nations, while only 78% of industrial fishing happens in, 78% um, happens in low income countries. So these are just some examples of distilling like action points or opportunities that we can collectively generate and summarize um, in order to educate ourselves on the way forward and the possibilities in front of us. Thank you, Laura. So that's really a, a sneak peek at the Blue Carbon chapter. Uh, we'll be releasing it more publicly uh, in the next month. And again, thank you so much to the team that helped us uh, move so, so much further on this project. Um, another sneak peek, another component of the chapter, I'll just give you a little brief, is that we've been creating these Kumu maps that help map what's going on in the space. So we have, uh, if you go to spaceshipearth.live in the Blue Carbon chapter, you can navigate these, but we did um, a blue carbon map of all the different resources as well as kind of a chapter outline. So this is one of the ways that we're playing with uh, for creating this collaborative chapter uh, design for the cooperating manual. And we need your help. So please sign up to be a member of BFI, sign up for the design science course. And then if you're interested in volunteering specifically on the cooperating manual, if you go to bit.ly slash Bucky manual, a lowercase, uh, we would love to have you as a co-author. Thank you, everyone.